Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you're out to help entrepreneurs better their businesses. My name is Ian Dennis, and today on the show we'll be exploring the transport business. I'll be meeting up with a gentleman named Abdi Rahman Ocheng, who recently set out Teco Car Hire Services. I want to find out what exactly are some of the challenges he faces in his day-to-day -day business, and later on, link him up to the CEO of Enna Coaches, a company that is making strides in the industry. So welcome to the show. So Abdi, yeah. we are in your prized possession. Yeah. <laughs> this is your, the latest in your fleet. Yeah. But just before we get into this, how did you get into the Kahaya business? How did it all start? Um, this business, it, ha it has a story behind it. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, I'm a cyclist by mm -hmm. profession. Yes, I realized the first time yeah. we met, yeah. you came with your regalia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was all kitted up and everything. So I started with cycling. But cycling, if you look at my CV, cycling is the hobby's part. So my CV is active all the way to the end, yeah? So I picked up cycling and uh, I used to import cycling goods and selling and, you know, also use them for my bike and everything. So it got to a point we used to go, apart from racing, we used to do tours. Mm -hmm. We'd go to Naivasha, Camp, Magadi, Namanga and all these places. And normally when we go for these tours, we need chase cars. Mm -hmm. Chess cars are cars that would carry bikes. So you guys used to roll like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, like two of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> you have so, your bicycles yeah. with your cars. Yeah, yeah. So chess cars would carry bikes and uh, in case of an emergency, someone would be put in there and we keep moving and even food and everything. So it gets to a point there's a shortage. Or I wouldn't call it a, a shortage per se. It's more of a, a getting a functional vehicle. Most cars are saloon cars, and as you know, saloon cars with their bicycles, it's a bit challenging. Yeah. So I thought I needed to come in with something that will, you know, serve that purpose. Mm -hmm. And when we are not on tours, I'd hire out the car. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, this is a good thing. So I got this, what you can see. Uh -huh. Interesting. But how, but before you bought this, mm -hmm. you told me that you were in employment before. Yeah. So how long were you in employment and at what point now did you decide to leave employment now fully focus on this? Uh, first I'd say uh, professionally I've done uh, information technology from, uh, I got my degree from uh, Jomo Kenyatta and in that line I've been employed in a couple of places, did my work and I finished and then the most recent employment was with an NGO in Westland, probably I'd like to keep it, uh, you know, the download. Uh, something happened. Um, uh, Trump came okay. into the picture. <laughs> yeah, tr and with Trump came changes, and some of the changes, uh, you know, they got us the wrong way, I'd say. But for me, it wasn't really the wrong way because every time I've been in employment, I've always been uh, looking outside the window, trying to find something new. So this was an opportunity, and I'd say it came at the right time. Because then there was retrenchment, they were restructuring and everything, so we got our packages. And with my savings and the package we got, I thought, let me, you know, now get into business full swing. And since then, I've never looked back. And what influenced you coming to the car hire business? Why didn't you now go into the taxi business? Why did you decide car hire specifically? Uh, I thought car hire because one is uh, I have, uh, I'm still in very many cycling groups on social media and every now and then as we speak we have a series of uh, events that are upcoming and with every event there's always some, someone asking for a car and uh, I do service this part of uh, the event every now and then so and it's it's, it's, it's still car hire because it's business. It's not like I'll give it out for free. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the reason why uh, car hire is uh, what I've decided to do more than just the standby taxi. Yes. Taxi hailing services. Technology has disrupted the transport business. The introduction of taxi hailing applications such as Little Curb, Taxify, Uber and Mondo has disrupted the transport industry, not only making it affordable for clients, but also convenient getting from one place to another. So what are the requirements of getting into the business? Car requirements. One, one needs to have a PSV motor insurance. 
Two, dependent on the company subscribed to, the vehicle should not be more than between 8 to 10 years from the year of manufacture. Three, the engine capacity requirement varies dependent on the company, though there has been a preference to have cars with lesser engines of between 1000 to 1300cc. Four, the vehicle has to be in excellent condition and be able to accommodate at least four passengers. Five, the vehicle must have a valid inspection report that is less than three months. And six, the vehicle must have a valid city council business permit. And I've realized now your major clientele now comes from this community of the cycling group. Yes. And how sustainable is it? Because you told me that most, because you're a cycler, that's your hobby, that's your full time, that's what you like doing, and that's your main clientele. Why, why, why the, that particular community? Did... Uh, for, for, for when it comes to the cycling community, if uh, I may call it that, that one is more of a passion. So hiring a, it, the car out to them is more of a passion, but where I'm doing the real business is uh, corporates. Currently I have four return customers, but I do target uh, people who come into the country and they want to, to stay for like say two weeks. We'll get those and we'll give them the car for two weeks. So cycling, uh, I'd say I have a weakness there because it's a passion that I have, but when it's real business is for like people who actually hire out they want a car to use for some time. Some people hire, we have a minimum of three days. So some people hire out, uh, will want the car for three days and that's where the business is, yeah, most of the time. And in terms of now marketing, getting the word out there uh, that here's, uh, here's Ab Abdi, here's what exactly does, how do you market yourself to your clientele and to the corporate world that you're telling me about? I, I'd say I'm lucky because I used to work at an NGO, so to, yeah, like I told you. I used to work at an NGO, so I still have the contacts. Yeah, we have uh, expatriates who are still, who still want this service. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'd also say I'm lucky enough to, to have links abroad. So with links abroad, it means those people will get to know if they have friends or friends who will be coming into Kenya and they'll give them, you know, a choice. Like, hey, you can get a car and then I get the connection that way. Another way I, I market myself is even when we are going for this bike tours and it's hired out, it's a word of mouth. They get to see the car and they're like, oh, who owns this car? And then that way you get clients coming in. And even in the car, I normally drop my business cards. I actually saw a couple in the oh, dashboard. Yeah, <laughs> put them there on the dashboard and anywhere else I can put them without really uh, being a bother to whoever is using the car, but when the car comes back, I don't find them. So to me, I feel like someone picked it or someone distributed it to, you know, yes. And the business of Kaha, it's quite uh, competitive. Yes. And I think one of the com competitive edges of people is really the pricing. So how do you usually go about pricing? Um, uh, I'd say, to be honest, is uh, the pricing, first of all, I did my research. The market, dictates the price when it comes to car hire. But then uh, we try and, because uh, we have a target market, we have a niche in the market. And for us to get to that level, we really focus on the, the what can I say, the cleanliness of the car. And most importantly is the service the condition of the vehicle. As you can see, we just replaced, uh, it has new, new tires and it was returned this morning. So before it goes anywhere, it has to go for service, for checkup and everything to make sure everything is okay. And we normally get feedback from the clients who use this car. They're like, hey, your car is, is really nice. Most of our clients actually have their own personal cars, just so you know, but they at times prefer to use this one. Yeah. So and this business, uh, we've had so many stories about uh, persons hiring a car and then stealing your car or someone, I don't know, hijacked or all that stuff. Have you had that incident? Take me through an incident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a time we had someone uh, uh, who needed to hire this car and it's so unusual that this person wanted to pay up front and even give extra. And we're like, wait a minute it doesn't work this way. Most of these people are bargaining. So why this person? Until I met this person and it wasn't, it didn't seem right. I wouldn't say I know what they wanted to do with the thing. Maybe they were very genuine, but then now my conscience 
was like, uh, I don't think uh, this is good business. As Techno Kahaya Services, what aspirations do you guys do hold? Uh, we are looking at, uh, we normally, our vision is very like long term. And uh, I'm hoping one day you'll be interviewing me from the door of my plane. <laughs> Uh -huh. One day. One day, yeah, we'll do this Richard interview. Branson. Exactly, we'll do I need this interview from... Techno car hire services. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, hire plane services. Yes, yes, probably. Yeah. All right, so after the break, I'll be linking up Abdi to the CEO of Ena Coaches, one of the companies that's making strides in the transport business. So keep it right here on The Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their businesses.